Okay, so I'm in a new location today, down in the basement. The house is too noisy, and I'm sure everybody's dealing with these kind of things right now. What I'm going to talk about today, and I thought since a lot of people are home, we're in um, April of 2020 during the coronavirus pandemic, and I thought I'd get back to some like nuts and bolts of photography editing and maybe some shooting advice and things like that. Things that if you are a new photographer, maybe you don't know or don't know how to do, or maybe not understand why you would do something. So today I'm going to talk about why I almost always, in fact, I think I always underexpose my images. And I there's a couple of ways you can do this in your camera. And I'm going to talk about why I do this. And then I'm going to show you two images. One of them I purposefully overexposed. And the other one I underexposed as low as I could to get the uh, details in one of the brightest parts of the images to, you know, be visible without them being blown out. And I'm going to show you why I did that and why it's, I think it's better to underexpose than to overexpose. Um, but first I want to talk about the camera and actually capturing your images. This is my DSLR. It's a Nikon D750. Um, I'm shooting right now on the Canon M50, but most cameras that are an interchangeable lens camera are going to have some form of exposure compensation. I know a lot of people don't like to shoot manual or they're a little afraid of it, maybe. If you're comfortable using aperture priority mode, what that's going to do for you is actually you're going to control how wide you set the aperture in the camera and the camera will adjust the shutter speed accordingly. Now, depending on the darkness of the environment, uh, there may come a point where the shutter speed becomes too slow for you to handhold your camera and then you're going to use a tripod to maybe extend the shutter speed out without moving the camera. That's a little different than using manual mode where you control the aperture and the shutter speed and you use the meter in the camera to actually show you where you, your exposure is going to be. The zero point is what the camera would consider a perfect exposure. When you go above that point, you're actually overexposing. When you go below it, you're underexposing. When I shoot, I generally like to shoot on the underexposing side of it. So if I'm shooting in manual mode off a tripod, I'll have the camera set in manual mode and I will adjust my aperture to what I think I want for the scene. Maybe I want a shallow depth of field, maybe I don't. And then I will adjust my shutter speed accordingly to get a balanced exposure. And then from there, I will decide if I need to use a neutral density filter if it's too bright, or maybe um, I need a tripod because it's too dark out. So there are different things that are gonna play into that. But that's how manual exposure works. And then you just use the meter in your camera to see where your exposure falls, you know, on which side of perfectly exposed, under or over. Now in aperture priority mode, you're taking away one of the choices of you making a decision and letting the camera do that. And that's the shutter speed. So many, many photographers, this is their default camera setting to shoot in. And the reason is it's, it's, it's a pretty reliable way to get good exposure most of the time. So there's a button on your camera that's called exposure compensation. And what that does is you press the button. Let me see if I can get it to work here. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but right here is the camera's meter. Okay, and right now the camera is actually showing a perfect exposure. So if I press the exposure compensation button here and then roll the dial, you could see what's happening. That meter is going up, okay, because I'm overexposing. If I go the other way with it, with my exposure compensation, it's going to expose down. And I don't know if you could see it, but in the screen, I'm actually getting much darker. So watch what happens when I go the other way. I'm overexposing and now I'm underexposing. So this is a really great way to control the exposure while shooting in aperture priority mode. Super simple to use. It's a button on the top of the camera or it'll be a setting on the back of the camera. Just about every camera has this. So the way I default shoot is about maybe one stop below that or not, not quite. Maybe, you know, I don't know, just in between um, one stop and a perfect exposure. That's about where I like to keep the camera. The reason I do that is, like I said, I, I don't want the, the image to be overexposed. And I'm going to jump into the computer here and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about, exactly why you don't want to do this. And then I'm going to actually show you how I would edit an image. And it's amazing what you can do with editing software if you have all the information in your shot and you haven't blown it out by overexposing some parts of it. So let's jump into the computer here and I'll actually take you through a couple of images quickly and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so 
as you can see right here, I have an image I took. This is um, the main entrance of Walt Disney World at about 1.30 in the morning with no people around. And uh, Eric and I were just leaving after a long day in the parks. And um, this is just a nice wide landscape shot. And the reason why I wanted to show you this one is this was part of an HDR that I created. So that's another thing that we can talk about is HDR. But this is a merging of many exposures. But if you don't want to do that, there is a workaround to this. So this was the overexposed version of that shot. I took a bracketed set of three images. So if you look here, I'll show you. You have the underexposed, you have the medium exposure, and then you have the overexposed shot. Now, if I was only going to work on this one image, I want to show you what happens when you try to bring down the highlights in an image like this. So I'm going to reset the image. Okay, this is the way the camera saw it. Okay, so now we're going to take down the highlights. Take them all the way down. Okay, and I want to zoom in tight. Now the image looks much better, right? It looks pretty good, and if I open up the shadows here, it actually, it kind of balances out the image pretty nicely. But look what happened up here. These areas are completely blown out, where you're looking at the lights across the train station here, and mainly the clock right in the middle here. It's blown out. Now, I can lower my exposure a little bit, and the information is just not there. So as you can see, that's like unrecoverable. And this can happen a lot of times, especially if the sun is in your image or you're in a brightly backlit situation. Sometimes it's okay to do this and just blow out the background as long as your subject is you know, in focus and, and sharp and, and exposed properly, that might be what you want. But for images like this where you want a balanced image, this image is not usable on its own if I want to gather all of the information and use it all and create a balanced image with detail in all parts of the image. So now I'm going to show you the underexposed image. And this looks like it's unbelievably dark and unusable. Like, what, what are you going to do with this? Are you going to brighten it up? What's going to happen here? So. Now, you have to have a working knowledge of Lightroom, and you have to know how the tools work. But I'm going to give you some like a quick edit on this and how I would do this. So what I would first do with this image is I would raise the exposure up across the board. Okay? So I would bring the exposure up. Now, as you can see, the clock is blown out again. Everything looks the same as it did on that other picture. But... With this image, the information is still in there because I didn't blow it out when I shot it. I just made it look really bright by raising the exposure, but I can recover that. So now I brought the highlights way down, actually more than I want to, just to show you. Now look at the clock. The information is in there, okay? Now it's a little dark, the whole image, so I'm going to show you how I would edit this now. So we're going to go back in here. I'm going to bring the highlights back up. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay. So I'm actually, let's see, with the exposure. Exposure here. Highlights down a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to use the graduated filter to add some exposure to the bottom of the image. And if you don't know how to use any of these tools, uh, we have tutorials on all of them on the channel here. Okay, so let's bring up the bottom of the image here a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to actually use the radio filter, which is a circular filter. And I'm only going to put it over the clock. So let's move this right over the clock. Make it a little bit smaller. Now I'm going to click O on my keyboard to see what the actual, um, where my mask is actually applied. So what I want to do here is I'm going to, so I'm going to remove the feather all the way. So now everything outside of that clock I can work on, but the clock will stay the same. So I've basically just selected the clock here. And this is a quick workaround. Now I'm going to take off the mask so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to raise the entire picture. But what's happening is everything 
but the clock is getting raised. Now I'm going to dodge and burn a little bit. And what that means is I'm just going to use the adjustment brush to light and darken little pieces of the image. Now this is a quick edit. I would be a little finer with my choices uh, here. I would have went exactly around the clock. I would have been a little tighter with my adjustments and things, but I just want to give you an idea of how you can get, you know, things done pretty quickly. So I'm going to take the highlights down a little bit here and just paint down on the bottom of the image here and maybe bring the exposure down a bit, just a little bit. Now I'm going to run this right across the train station here, darken it up just a bit. Under here, maybe under here. Um, I'm going to create a new one. Now I'm just going to use the highlights, maybe right here a little bit. You know, just try to balance, just balancing things out a little bit. Maybe right up on here. That's a bit much, so I'm going to bring that one back. Okay, now let's zoom in on that clock. Okay, so as you can see, I still have the detail in there. Now if I want to, I can take a small adjustment brush and I can take the highlights down a little bit. Just paint it over here. That's a bit much, I don't like that. Now I'll take the exposure down, maybe a touch. And there you have the detail back in that clock. That's about where I want to leave it. Maybe add a little clarity right to that spot. And a little bit of texture. Okay. So let's see what the whole image looks like. I like it. I'm going to open up the shadows on the whole image a little bit. And I'm going to add some texture to the whole image. And I'm actually going to add a little vibrance. And that's pretty much how I would edit this. Now, I wouldn't have been able to do an image like this using the overexposed version of that. So this happens all the time for me when I'm shooting. Whenever I shoot, I always find that I have more room to move and more information to work with when I underexpose and try to bring everything back into the picture rather than when I overexpose and try to bring everything down from an overexposed image. So I hope you understood what I was saying. If you have any questions or anything, ask them in the comments. Um, I like doing these type of tutorials because these are little things that, you know, it takes time to figure out and you have to edit so many images before you can actually start to, it becomes second nature to do these types of things. So keep editing and keep trying. If you're not using an editing program like Lightroom or something similar, you really should be because it takes your photography to the next level. It's really a, a great way to um, add creativity to your images. So that's just a little tip for you there. I'm going to do some more of these types of videos. If you like this, just let me know in the comments. You know, I guess I will... Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to leave um, some videos here for you to look at. I'm going to put our Lightroom uh, playlist over here. And then over here, I'm going to actually put uh, the HDR video that we did because that's basically another way to do this. You take the three images that I showed you at the beginning and when you blend them together, the computer actually does a lot of the work for you. But sometimes you don't have the ability to take three exposures and make sure everything's perfect. So sometimes you have to, you have one shot to take and you, you know, you're going to get one shot at something, uh, underexpose it a little bit and you'll have uh, better luck editing, I think. Okay, I'll see you in the next one.